foraging through the jungle comes the mighty warrior with his M1 Garand. <laughs> okay, that's a little over the top, I get it. Hey, I wanted to show you the M1 Garand. This is the gun guy, Joel Persinger, uh, on Gun Guy TV. These rifles are fabulous. I know there's 80 million videos about them, so if you typed Garand into YouTube, you'd probably find many, many, many more videos than you ever wanted to watch. But uh, they're worth it. These things are terrific. If you've never shot one, I encourage you to do so. They are built like a tank. They weigh a ton, uh, particularly when you get older like me. But I still like carrying them around, and I love shooting them. And uh, this one I got my, hold, my hands on for the video, uh, for which I'm very grateful. And uh, we're going to go shoot it and have some fun with it. There are some wives' tales about these that, uh, that you should know about in case you want to get one. First of all, first things first, uh, the gentleman that invented this was a guy named John Garand, and we call it the M1 Garand, but truthfully, uh, Mr. Garand pronounced his name Garand. It's sort of like magazine versus clip. It doesn't really matter, but if you, it's nice to know, so I figured I'd share that with you. Uh, the other thing is that it does hold eight rounds, but and people say, well, it only holds eight rounds. It doesn't work. Aha, uh -huh. wait a minute. Hold up. Dig in my pocket here. You think you're proud of your, your 223 5.56 AR, do you? You think you're proud of your AK rifle, do you? Well, take a look at those monsters right there. That little bitty one is the AR round. That one in the middle is the one from the AK 7.62 by 39. And that incredible monster right there, that 30-06, is what comes out of the M1 Garand. It may only have eight of them. But one of them is enough to get the job done, and that's what Garands shoot. Now, the other thing that uh, you should be aware of is, so it is very, very po powerful, but if you happen to get your hands on one, they really are designed to shoot ammunition from bygone days, and modern sporting 30-06 doesn't work very well in them. And in fact, it can actually damage them. It can da damage uh, different internal parts inside of them, so you want to be careful about that. There are some adjustments you can make. There's a different gas plug at the end that you can buy and some things you can do like that that will allow you to shoot modern ammunition in it, but you don't want to do that until the gun is ready to do that. That's one thing that you want to be aware of. Uh, let's see, some other wives' tales. Uh, the people will say that you cannot top off an M1 Garand, that you have to feed it a complete and full eight round end block clip in order to get it run. You can't, if you have two or three rounds left, you can't load those. You can only load it with a, an eight round clip. Well, that's baloney. And when we get it out on the range, I'm going to show you how to load two or three rounds into an M1 Garand. It's very simple and easy to do. Not a problem at all. Uh, simple, simple, simple. You can even top them off if you want to. So that's, that's another myth. You cannot top off an M1 Garand. Yes, you can. You just have to know how to do it. And it's real simple. And uh, if you ever talk to a World War I or World War II vet, there are still some of those guys around. They carried these around for years. They'll tell you the little tricks about how to run this rifle and run it really, really well. Uh, another thing is the old M1 thumb. Everybody screams about M1 thumb. Oh, you're going to get M1 thumb. Well, let me show you how you get M1 thumb. When you get this thing, you want, the main thing you want to do, the absolute most important thing to keep you from getting M1 thumb, is to grab a hold of that charging handle and rack it back with authority so that it locks in place. If you get it to lock in place, then you won't have a problem. Inside here, inside the mechanism, is a follower that follows the ammunition up through the end block clip as the ammunition is used from the magazine. And sometimes when people don't rack the slide completely, Instead of uh, or rack the uh, bolt completely, instead of getting it all the way back where it locks in position, it'll just be sitting there sort of hanging on top of that follower. And then all you got to do is jiggle the gun a little bit, and that racks forward. And, you know, it's just sitting down here, you jiggle the gun, and there goes your thumb. So that's how people get M1 thumb more often than not, is they simply have not pulled that bolt back and just jerk it back with authority until it locks into place. Once you've done that, boy, you can beat the snot out of it. It isn't going to go anywhere. It's locked in place and it's not going to move. It's a matter of when you feed the end block clip in, that's when you pull your thumb out. As you pull your thumb out, the mechanism releases the bolt and the bolt flies forward. So it'll hold it in place. If you push that end block clip all the way to the bottom and hold it there, the bolt's not going anywhere until you pull your thumb out and then it's going to go. So pretty simple. It's a matter of just knowing how to run the rifle and then it won't bite you. That's basically it. Uh, the other thing you can do if you're really still afraid of it, I mean, it is like sticking your finger in a mousetrap. If you're still afraid of it, then you can take your palm, the heel of your hand, and ride it right along there on top of that 
that little section of the, uh, you know, the, the charging handle, and then push your end block clip in, and when you're done, take your thumb out and let it go, and it'll fly forward that way. So that's another way to do it, is ride your palm right on top of that, that charging handle, and hold it there while you push this down, let it go forward, and it won't bite you. So that's how you keep from getting M1 thumb with an M1 Grand. So there's some techniques to use, but the number one thing is, make sure that you rack that bolt all the way back with authority, and then it'll lock in place. All right, that's enough talking about this thing. It's just a lot more fun to shoot than it is to talk about. So let's get out on the range and uh, see what this baby will do. So now that we're uh, out of the avocado grove and onto the range where I can actually get some ammunition in the gun, I want to show you a few things that deal with those myths that we talked about earlier and dispel some of them. If you've got a, a uh, M1 Garand, it's kind of nice to know how to do certain things with it that a lot of people say you can't do. For example, how do you load it and not get your thumb smashed and get M1 thumb? Well, that's pretty simple to do. It's a very a very well-made mechanism. It's designed specifically not to smash your thumb, uh, and so I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Or for that matter, maybe you don't have eight rounds, so you can't load the entire uh, end block clip. You can only put two or three rounds in it. Well, if you put them in there, they rattle around. How do you get them in the rifle and actually shoot it if you only have a handful of rounds? Or for that matter, uh, if you're using it uh, to defend yourself, and God forbid you ever have to do that, but if you do, and maybe you've shot two or three rounds and now there's a lull in the action, how do you top the rifle off again without having to take the whole end block clip out and feed in a new one and go through the, mach the uh, machinations of doing that? So let me show you those three things real quick here. Um, we're on the range, so I'm going to put the rifle on the table so it points down range because we're going to use real ammunition, and that way if the gun goes off, it's not hurting anybody. It'll just go down range into the, uh, into the backstop down there. So here we go. All right, so first, before we do anything else, let's look at the whole M1 thumb thing. And you remember I, I mentioned that the problem with M1 thumb is not that the rifle is designed to, to bite your thumb. It's that people don't rack this, the, the bolt all the way back, and it hangs up right here and then flies forward on them and you know, pinches your thumb. So first and foremost, I'll just remind you again, grab a hold of that charging handle. And rack that back with authority. Make sure it's locked in place. If it's there, you can beat the snot out of it, and it's not going to, to go anywhere. And then you take your end block clip, which has got your eight rounds in it, and you just set it on the top. Now, here's the, uh, the fascinating part about the design of this rifle. If I push down on the top round like this with my thumb and push it all the way down until I feel it click, as long as I maintain pressure on the top round, the, uh, the action will not close on my thumb. The trick is, once I want to release pressure, it's time to get my thumb out of dodge as quick as possible. So I want to get it out of there. If you leave it in there, then the rifle's going to bite you. But it won't bite you just pushing your thumb all the way in. First couple times you do it, truthfully, it can be a little nerve-wracking. It's a little bit like sticking your hand in a mouse trap, <laughs> and I realize that. But you can watch me do it. It's my thumb I'm risking, and uh, we, can always, uh, you know, we can always go and bandage a thumb, I suppose. But we won't need to, because you'll notice as I push down on it all the way, I just felt it click and you saw it move. But notice, my thumb has got pressure on the rounds, and as long as I maintain that pressure, the action is not going to move. It's when I let go that the action will either close, or sometimes with an M1 it won't close, you have to tap it a little bit to get it to close. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Now, so the action is closed, but you'll notice I didn't hang around and let my thumb loiter around in there. I got it out of there, and the action closed up just fine. But I also want you to notice, too, that as long as I had pressure on the clip on the top round, pushing down on it with authority, the action was not going to close until I let go. So John Garand was a brilliant man. When he designed this rifle, he designed it for men that just needed a little bit of training, not too much, like what I just showed you. And this rifle is a fabulous gun. It will not grab your thumb. As long as this, you rack the, uh, the action all the way to the rear and make sure it's locked in place and then maintain pressure on that top round the whole time. All right, now, you've just discovered now not to get M1 thumb. Let's discover how to unload the rifle. This is pretty simple. We're just going to pull back on the, on the bolt and take that first round out. There it is. Now, you'll notice on the side there's a button right here. If I put my hand over the top of the action and push that button, look what just pops right out in my hand. There it is, the end block clip and I can lock that action all the way back again. Now I have an end block clip that only has seven rounds in it. There's the eighth one there, and I can push it back in there to load that back up. That's got eight in it again, and we're just going to set that aside because we're not going to use that anymore. That's, that's as far as we're going to use that one. Now, the other wives tale, and there are, like I said, there's a few. We just dealt with M1 thumb. The other ones are, you'll hear people say that you cannot load some loose rounds. Let's say you only have maybe two or three rounds in your pocket. That's all you got left. You don't have enough 
to load a full uh, a full eight round clip. So, but you want to be able to get these in the rifle because you'd like to be able to shoot them. Now, there's actually companies out there that make end block clips designed to just hold two or three rounds, but that's silly. You don't need them. All you need is the standard ones. They only cost about a buck, and you can buy them online, buy a bunch of them. That's a, one of the nice things about an M1 Garand is unlike buying a magazine for your AR or your Mini-14 or your Sega rifle or AK or something, these things are dirt cheap. You, they're just you know stamped metal, and they don't really cost very much. So what soldiers used to do is they just keep an extra one in their pocket or one or two that were empty and then you just drop it into the magazine like that there it is you can reach in there and get it out you can do whatever you want remember this isn't going to close until you push down on that follower follower all the way until it clicks so you've got your loose rounds maybe you got two or three in your pocket so you drop one in just like that let's get the first one in the hole here ah there you go come on get in there <laughs> only on video there you go there it goes all right and then we get the other one in there and now you got Two. So you had two rounds, you got them in the clip, but you know what, this is where people think it doesn't work. They'll push down like they would normally to load the rifle, they'll push down on just the magazine. If I push down the magazine, guess what, it won't click and the rifle won't load, it just keeps popping back up. So they come to the conclusion that I need some special tool or the rifle was just designed not to be able to load with less than eight rounds. But that's not true. Remember, it's not the clip that locks in at the bottom initially, it's the follower. So we don't just push the clip to the bottom, we have to push the follower all the way down. And since we have a only partially loaded clip, that means we have to push on the ammo itself, not on the, not on the clip. So important thing is, make sure you got your finger on, on, the, on the action, just in case it wants to close. It shouldn't, as long as you maintain pressure on the top round. But remember, your thumb's gonna be in there farther than it would be normally, a little quick, not so quick pulling it out maybe. So all you have to do is push down on the ammo until you feel it click into place. There it went. Now let the ammo up and guess what? Oop, there it went. You just loaded two rounds. So your rifle is loaded with two rounds. Pretty easy to do. That's how you load it if you just have a few rounds. Keep an empty clip, put it in there, feed them in there and push them all the way to the bottom. Just make sure you got a finger or something holding the action so it doesn't get your thumb. Now let's say we fired all but two rounds and we have three more and we want to top off the round, top off the gun because we, we were in a a defensive situation where we had to defend ourselves but now there's a lull in the action and we want to take these last three rounds we've got here and load them inside this magazine without having to take it out that's fairly easy to do what you're going to do is pull back on the charging handle again catch that round and then push this button again and just let when you push the the uh, ejector button to eject the clip just let the clip come up enough that it holds the action in place that's all you got to do and then it's like topping it off again you're just Feeding that one in there. There it goes. And then we're going to get the next one in there. And the next one, and so on, until you feel like you got as many in there as you, as you can get in there. And then at that point, you've got your rifle topped off. Now, you don't have a full magazine, remember, so if I push down on the magazine itself, it may not, it won't go, but if I push down on the rounds, there you go, now it locked, there you go. How about that? So you can top it off. Now, is it simple to do? Yeah. Is it easy to do? With a little practice, sure, you can see me wrestling with it, I don't do it a whole lot. So if it's something that you're going to do a lot or it's a rifle you're going to depend on a lot, practice it a little bit. But remember, when you're putting in a full magazine, hold the pressure on the round all the way down, and the minute you let go, it could lock forward, so make sure you get your thumb out of the way. When you're loading a partial uh, clip into the magazine or just uh, topping off, remember to make sure you got a finger or something holding onto that bolt because that's where you're fiddling around in there and it's possible to get yourself bit. So as long as you got a finger on that bolt or something holding it in place, you can load a partial uh, clip. It's not a big deal. Put the clip in first and just fill it up. Or you can top it off. Either one will work. The M1 Garand is a fine rifle. It's built to be able to do those things as a main battle rifle. Uh, it had to be able to do those things in order to succeed as, as admirably as it did in the war. You gotta love the M1 Garand. <laughs> what a fun rifle to shoot. Uh, it, as I said, it's, uh, it's a classic. 
And if you don't have one and you can ever get your hands on one, you probably ought to do it. It's just a terrific rifle. And you know, if you're in a very restrictive state like California, uh, this is a rifle that'll probably never, well, we hope anyway, it'll never be banned or taken away. Uh, some states don't like the semi-automatics at all, but the nice part about the, Marine, the Grand is there's no detachable magazine. It's got an eight round capacity, so it's under the 10 round limit. And uh, boy, a 30 6 really hits with authority. And there's lots of kind of cool stuff you can do with them. But as you can see, they're just a, just a lot of fun to shoot. Anyway, there you go, the M1 Garand. Hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, some of the myths about it, and we dispelled some of those, I hope. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the, enjoyed the video. I love this rifle enough that if I can get my hands on it again, I'm going to come out and do some more videos on it, and we'll get a little deeper into this rifle at some other time. Hey, don't forget to check out the previous videos. We've got some great ones coming up. Please like, subscribe, share us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and all those other wonderful places. And if you would, please join the National Rifle Association. If you're not already a member of the NRA, you need to be. And you can join and save yourself some money by clicking on the link. That way you can help the NRA and the rest of us who are members protect your firearms rights. Thanks again for watching.